at the ECG into this kind of clean and clear ECG signal. Uh, the data set I use from the PhysioNet website and today I'm also using the PhysioNet website data set but I'm going to uh, deep dive into a filtration process with the Butterworth filter. The reason to create this video is this command uh, which is two days ago so I decided to create a video on it isn't 15 hertz way too low for the cutoff frequency so let's try well, uh, to remove the high frequency noise such as the muscles noise and the electrical inference noise a cutoff frequency between 30 to 40 hertz is often used uh, so basically uh, but if we are focusing on QRS detection the QRS complex a cutoff frequency between 10 to 20 hertz is commonly used uh, see uh, the ECG wave basically it starts with the P wave and then we have this QRS uh, this is uh, the baseline if you closely watch this line it is called a baseline and the first um, starting from lower end it is a Q and then we have a R peak and then we have this uh, second uh, which is S so that's how the QRS complex is generated and uh, this one uh, starting uh, this peak is the basically T wave so you can also visualize in some uh, ECG signals the U wave as well so basically the more focus we normally do is ST segments QRS complex uh, R peak detection and uh, moving on if we want to detect the P wave the P wave detection cutoff frequency between 5 to 15 Hertz is properly uh, a good uh, cutoff frequency selection as P waves have lower frequency content uh, than the QRS complex so the ST segment analysis uh, so for the ST segment also the 5 to 10 Hertz is often used now let's come to the MATLAB window and uh, let's try to do some over uh, ECG and uh, for this example I had downloaded some uh, MATLAB format uh, ECG signal this is uh, downloaded from the PhysioNet dataset and I'm simply uh, using um, a simple MATLAB format value so what uh, this ECG data is and uh, here you can see now we have a simple matrix of 12 by 15 000, so 5000 and now we have over ECG data. So if we want to take a simple lead one segment we can simply grab this from ECG data and then we want first and all the other values and we can simply plot it and see how it looks like. So that's how our ECG signal looks like as you can see it is not as much noisy as it was from this video uh, so we have a little bit of high frequency noise if you zoom into any uh, cross section of the signal as you can see this is a high frequency noise it works and for that purpose we are just using a butterworth filter function and if you again see the help of it it will say that you need to use it like this and uh, we are creating just a low pass filter so here it how a low pass filter works and uh, uh, instead of uh, the cutoff frequency we are just passing it uh, let's say 30 and the order we are just passing second order function and uh, now we have uh, the cutoff frequency must be within the interval of 5 and 0 and fs is equal to 500 and uh, uh, now we are creating our wn which is equal to uh, the cutoff frequency which is 30 and divided by fs divided by 2 and uh, now you can see over cutoff frequency is within 0 and 1 and uh, what we can do here is we can simply uh, reuse this one and we will pass the WN here and now we have a B and A coefficient which we can use to filter our signal. We can simply use a filter function for that. We can use the filt filt function and like this and we can now plot this signal and uh, filtered segment and uh, this is how it looks like so here you can see the high frequency noise is eliminated now all we have to do is to eliminate 
uh, the this uh, kind of artifact and uh, to increase the baseline vendor so we can properly grab these peaks and uh, we can have a clear information about the start and stop uh, threshold values for our uh, peaks and qrs complex so we need uh, to align them into a single line so for that reason we have to create an other filter and uh, the best possible way is to combine both of filter values is to combine them into one single filter which is a band pass filter so uh, let's uh, try to use a band pass filter rather than just focusing on a, a simple filter so for that purpose what we uh, do is we create uh, these kind of information we have a uh, uh, a low frequency of 5 and a high frequency of 15 then we create a second order uh, band pass filter uh, with this information and we cl uh, clearly uh, create a filtered segment 2 and when we run this section uh, let's uh, filter it with the uh, lead 1 complete data information and uh, let's now filter it and uh, now if we try to plot this signal and uh, as you can see um, let's uh, try to plot this signal here like uh, this one and uh, let's just uh, plot the original signal and uh, then we plot this signal and here is the output now you can clearly see that all the information is aligned along with the timing information we have clearly uh, the uh, P wave then QRS complex and we have this T wave information preserved as well so there there you can see we have a clear information preserved and over ECT signal is aligned and this muscle artifact is also removed and we have removed all of the information so that's why we chose the 5 to 15 Hertz frequency uh, for our uh, cutoff uh, region and if we um, increase uh, we change this uh, from instead of 5 to 3 and uh, we again try to um, create uh, this one and let's run this section and uh, now if we try to uh, plot this information and uh, let's see what we got so here you can also see uh, we now have uh, uh, the steeper curve and we have this information as well so that's the reason uh, to we have these values preserved and uh, all other informations are preserved so uh, that's how we have to decide uh, um, the band pass filter rather than just focusing on a low pass filter and uh, so that we can also remove uh, and correct this baseline vendor so that's all for today's video thank you and see